Hi everyone, welcome back to my class. Myself Ruman Ali. I hope you all are doing well. The name of our lesson is Biogeochemical Cycle. Some scientists told that water cannot be taken as a biogeochemical substance, but as the water is the main constituent of all the living organisms, we are taking water into consideration as a biogeochemical substance and we will study about the water cycle in this chapter. So, before we study about the water cycle, let us discuss the importance of water first. So, 3 by 4 the part of the earth is covered with water. Even though the water is present in the huge amount, but out of the total water, 97 percentage of the water is salty that makes up seas and oceans and this water cannot be consumed directly by the living organisms and 2% of the water forms glaciers, the ice caps on the mountains or the ice at the different locations that is called as glaciers and remaining 1% of the water is fresh water and this 1% of the fresh water shows 3 by 4th part of this fresh water makes the lakes, ponds, rivers and it is present in the bodies of some plants and animals also. 1 by 4th part of this fresh water forms ground water. So, here once again I am going to repeat the percentage of the water that is present on the earth. So, here 3 by 4th part of the earth is covered with water and out of that total water 97 percent of the water is salty which cannot be consumed by the living organisms and 2 percent of the water is in the form of ice that is in the form of glaciers and only 1 percent of the water is fresh water and out of this fresh water 3 by 4th part of this fresh water makes up the lakes, ponds, rivers and also it is present in the bodies of plants and animals and 1 by 4th remaining 1 by 4th part of this fresh water makes the ground water. So, this is the percentage of the water that is present in the different forms on the earth. In a human around 70 percent of the body weight is because of water. Water plays a vital role in carrying out the different activities in the body of the different living organisms. In the human beings water is, water is required for proper circulation. If the water is not present in our body then the blood becomes thick and the circulation stops. If the circulation stops, the pulse rate falls down and we may die. So, the circulation is a very important process that can be done because of the presence of water only. If the water is not present, then the proper circulation cannot be seen in the body of human beings. And for proper digestion also we need water. After eating food, we drink water. So, the main aspect of drinking water is for proper digestion. If we drink the water in a proper quantity, then the digestion can be proper and problems cannot be arises in the process of digestion. So, for uh, proper digestion also we need water and even in the respiration process, the respiratory tract should be liberated and it has to send the water vapor. So, that for this purpose also the water is required in cellular respiration. Cellular respiration means the food is combined with the oxygen and it releases energy. So, releases energy in the body and to carry out the reactions that takes place in the cellular respiration, we need water. Water is very important constituent of all the living organisms and it plays very very important functions in carrying out the different biological activities of different living organisms. So, here we have studied. So, this is the importance of water. Let us study about the water cycle. So, water cycle it is a cyclic process in which the water evaporates from the land into the atmosphere and then it comes back to the earth surface. This process of evaporation and condensation and then the water comes back to the surface of the earth. So, this whole cyclic process is called as water cycle. And when we talk about the water cycle or the steps that includes in the water cycle, then it includes evaporation, condensation, precipitation and collection of water in the different forms. 
So, let us start the first step that comes in the water cycle and that is evaporation. The water which is present in the different water bodies like in the streams, in ponds, rivers or any other uh, water bodies that water is evaporated in the form of a water vapor into the atmosphere. That means the water changes into water vapor. Water becomes water vapor due to sunlight and this change or this process of changing water into water vapor we can call it as evaporation that we have already studied in our lower classes and after the evaporation takes place the water vapor which is present in the atmosphere that forms the clouds the water vapor present in the atmosphere that changes into the clouds and when this cloud touches the cool surface of the mountain cap or if it becomes cool because of the climatic region then that water vapor or the clouds can turn into then that clouds or the water vapor which are present in that clouds it changes into water that means condensation takes place what are the water vapor forms the cloud that changes into water and this water falls down onto the earth in the form of rain or in the form of ice so in the different forms it can fall down onto the earth but here the process of changing water vapor into water is called as condensation after the condensation takes place the water uh, falls down on the earth in the different forms that falling of the rain or falling of the water in the different form we can call it as precipitation the water which falls down in, in the form of rain it falls from the surface of the mountains the rain water which falls from the mountains that rain water is called as runoff and this running of the water when reaches the land the maximum amount of that water forms the lakes ponds and uh, streams this uh, and the remaining water when it seeps into the earth that forms the groundwater so the rain water when it reaches to the earth it will be stored in the different forms it will be present in the different form like in the ponds lakes or streams or in the form of groundwater and some amount of the water is absorbed by the soil also uh, so in this way the rainwater percolates into the ground and it forms the groundwater evaporation is not only the aspect of changing water into water vapor there are some other aspects in the water cycle that contributes in changing water into water vapor and release that water vapor into the atmosphere and that aspects of that processes are transpiration and perspiration also animals when they exhale air so along with the gas some water vapor also comes out and that water vapor releases into the atmosphere and this transpiration is a process that is carried out by the plants plants carry out the process of transpiration in which they lose the water so in such a way the water is lost in the form of water vapor and it reaches to the atmosphere so there are uh, certain ways by which the water reaches the atmosphere and that includes evaporation transpiration and perspiration and after the water vapor reaches the atmosphere it becomes clouds and then the if the cloud becomes cool then that water vapor changes into water that uh, and this process is called as condensation after the condensation the water falls in the form of rain which we call it as precipitation precipitation and this rain water when comes to the earth it forms the different water bodies and it again goes back to the atmosphere in the form of water vapor so this cyclic process of water is called as water cycle so abhi hum baat karenge water cycle ke bare mein yahan par ऐसा साइक्लिक प्रोसेस होगा जिससे वाटर एवोपरेट होगा एटमोसफियर में फिर रेन के फॉर्म में नीचे वापस अर्थ पे आ जाएगा तो इस साइक्लिक प्रोसेस को हम बोलेंगे वाटर साइकिल वाटर साइकिल के मेन फोर स्टेप्स होते हैं और वो है एवोपरेशन कंडेंसेशन प्रेसिपिटेशन और कलेक्शन एवोपरेशन यानी वाटर जो भी प्रेजेंट होता है अर्थ में जो कि लेक्स में हो पॉन्ड्स या फिर ओशन सीज ये सारे वाटर जब सनलाइट ज़्यादा होती है तब ये एवोपरेट हो जाते हैं वाटर वेपर के फॉर्म में और वो वाटर वेपर एटमोसफियर में जाके जब कलेक्ट हो जाता है और जब अक्यूमुलेट हो जाता है एटमॉस्फेयर में तब वो क्लाउड्स बन जाते हैं ये क्लाउड्स जब कूल हो जाते हैं तब कंडेंसेशन होगा यानी वो वाटर वेपर वाटर में चेंज हो जाएगा और जब क्लाउड्स वाटर में चेंज हो जाएंगे तो फिर ये रेन के फॉर्म में नीचे वापस अर्थ पर आ जाएंगे और ये रेन के फॉर्म में वाटर नीचे वापस अर्थ पर आने को हम बोलेंगे प्रेसिपिटेशन 
प्रेसिपिटेशन के बाद जो रेन वाटर सरफेस ऑफ द माउंटेन्स के ऊपर से आता है वो वाला रेन वाटर को हम रन ऑफ बोलेंगे और ये वाटर जब लैंड के ऊपर रीच होता है तब इसका थोड़ा सा वाटर तो लेग्स और पॉन्ड्स में चला जाएगा और रिवर्स फॉर्म कर देगा और थोड़ा वाटर सॉइल के नीचे चला जाएगा जिसकी वजह से ग्राउंड वाटर फॉर्म हो जाएगा तो इस तरह से डिफरेंट वाटर बॉडीज फॉर्म होते हैं रेन वाटर से सो दिस इज अबाउट द वाटर साइकिल यहाँ पर एवोपरेशन के थ्रू ही सिर्फ वाटर वाटर वेपर में चेंज नहीं होगा दूसरे भी ऐसे एस्पेक्ट है जिसकी वजह से वाटर वाटर वेपर में चेंज होगा और वो है ट्रांसपीरेशन और पेरिस्पिरेशन ट्रांसपीरेशन एक ऐसा प्रोसेस है जो प्लांट्स में होता है और ये वाले प्रोसेस में वाटर लॉस होता है वाटर वेपर के फॉर्म में और पेरिस्पिरेशन भी ऐसा प्रोसेस है जो एनिमल्स में होता है यानी एयर जब एक्सेल करते हैं एनिमल्स तब कार्बन डाइऑक्साइड के साथ में वाटर वेपर भी एक्सेल किया जाता है तो ये वाटर वेपर जो एनिमल्स और प्लांट्स से एक्सेल किया जा रहा है लॉस किया जा रहा है वो वाला वाटर वेपर एटमोसफियर में अक्यूमुलेट होकर क्लाउड्स फॉर्म करता है फिर वो क्लाउड्स रेन की शक्ल में नीचे वापस अर्थ पे आ जाते हैं तो इस तरह से जो साइक्लिक प्रोसेस हो रहा है वाटर का इस साइक्लिक प्रोसेस को हम बोलेंगे वाटर साइकिल इन द नेक्स्ट क्लास आई एल एक्सप्लेन यू द रिमेनिंग डिफरेंट बायो जियो केमिकल साइकिल्स दैट्स ऑल फॉर टुडे मीट यू नेक्स्ट क्लास थैंक यू